beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while this need now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Lord. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. That's what he's doing in our minds right now. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward the first difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives while the poor believe in luck and chance so write it under the category of the rich write that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives they believe that they have a role to play in their wealth and financial abundance. Every wealthy man, justly wealthy, not crooks, not corrupt people, everyone justly wealthy, especially in the kingdom, they believe that they, there is a participation from their own end to determine the outcome of their lives. If they are to get into the wealthy place, they believe that. They believe in taking responsibility over their financial destiny still the same point while the poor believe in luck and chance are you seeing i'm contrasting the mindsets now the poor believe in luck they believe in chance they believe in modern nature they hope that one day something will change they love that saying how can they lie shiria we are poor because god wants it that way right they are the ones who teach oh god give them so that through them we will get it's a devilish mentality don't ever use that kind of word again you are cursing yourself and cursing your destiny you disqualify yourself from receiving the blessings of the kingdom say amen so mindset number one the rich believe in taking responsibility say after me in the name of jesus i take responsibility for the outcome of my finances in the name of jesus i take responsibility for my financial destiny say in the name of jesus i stop blaming parents i stop blaming friends i stop blaming circumstances i take full responsibility for the outcome of my financial destiny the moment you get to that point you are beginning to be like the rich my brother did not give me the hundred thousand otherwise i would have bought more goods and then my shop would have expanded you are a liar that's not the reason leave your brother alone and leave him in peace he may have done you bad but that's not the reason 
the poor love passing responsibility they love it when they say no it's because of government no that's not the reason the flaw of government revealed a flaw in you that had been there see that number two the rich are very disciplined and patient people underline the word discipline and patience the rich are very disciplined and patient people while the poor are very indisciplined and very impatient financially speaking and generally speaking the poor are so careless careless over their financial resources they are not disciplined most people think the rich are the ones who do get rich quick things no no the poor are the ones who always want sharp sharp money they always want all kinds of things every wealthy man understands the place of discipline and patience hallelujah is a wealthy man that will be worth 10 million naira and he will still be taking bike because he's trying to build his wealth a wealthy man will be 10 million naira worth yet he's staying in one small room because he's building a poor man if he gets 100 or 1 million naira he will rent a house of 600 thousand buy a suit of 100 thousand and die with the remaining 400 thousand very impatient people and there is a pressure listen especially for us the young people there is so much pressure in our generation to prove that you are making it right the moment someone graduates everybody is saying so how far how far how far what is happening and then we try to look for all kinds of ways you kill yourself and buy a suit of hundred thousand and that's all your savings home and abroad you buy a watch of twenty five thousand buy a shoe of thirty thousand and where you stand the people you are talking to are so poor they don't even know the difference between a watch of two thousand and a watch of twenty five thousand so the effort to impress them has been wasted hallelujah the rich are very disciplined people very disciplined they don't waste money go to the restaurant and see the way the poor eat you will be shocked you will think they just won a lottery madam eat they yes and you say bring it and they, they eat carelessly and foolishly and they spend all the money when their friends come in guy how far now i sit down sit down don't worry don't worry i will arrange things for you this is a poor man look at what he's doing is that one is not just giving it's called financial carelessness are we learning something and then he finds out that money is running away from him perpetually number three the rich and wealthy believe in the law of process they believe in the law of process they know that it takes time to build wealth wealth true wealth and prosperity is a function of time the rich believe in the law of process the poor always want results without process that's why they get into all kinds of things that's why they are deceived and swindled around they get into all kinds of things because they are poor they, from the mind not from their business from the mind the poor like processes with they like results without process so you meet somebody around the park and the person calls you right like we have many in our in our society we've had so many stories of those people they call you around they act as though they are strangers or they send you an email you have just won two million us dollars or 10 million and you are not even afraid to read the mail you open it and smile and they write there they say don't tell anybody and you keep quiet you call your friend and say ah it's miracle service the prayer is it's not miracle service you are about to get into trouble how many people have been swindled of 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 their hard earned money because of getting into schemings let me tell you anything that does not subscribe to the law of process run away from it breakthrough comes instantly but preparation from that for that breakthrough takes time 
it is the manifestation that is instant not the preparation in one day you can become a millionaire but after a season of preparation are you getting the point now you don't prepare one day no sir no sir it took joseph one day to become a prime minister but it took him 12 years to prepare for that position it took moses one day to exit uh, the people out just one plague overnight but it took him 40 years at the back side of the mountain hallelujah it took jesus three days only three days to fulfill his assignment he died was buried resurrected in three days the plan of salvation was over but it took him about 30 years to prepare so the rich where are we the rich believe in the law of process and the poor jump process right they jump a lot of process they want result sharp sharp someone just comes with a phone and say guy buy this phone now and you will sell it you didn't ask him where he got the money the person who is trying to sell the phone to you is looking like an arm robber and most likely he is and you are there because you want it sharp sharp may the lord deliver us from this sharp sharp mentality in the name of jesus christ never be under pressure to prove to people that i want to make it sharp sharp you want to start a shop in one day and you want to have 100 customers in one day you want to start a restaurant in one day and you want to be the leading that's what has led men of god to witchcraft they start a church and in one year they want five thousand members in one year the man wants protocol in one year he wants to go on air in one year he wants to have the best of sound the best of church activity so he will have to go and, and bow down to some godless things how many people are in occults today many of our parents have joined fraternities and occults because they want sharp sharp money they join all kinds of clubs and societies that don't make sense they initiate them into godless things the rich and the wealthy the truly rich and the wealthy they know that it takes time it takes time it takes time warren buffett one of the well the world's wealthiest man I think he should be in his 70s or 80s right now a billionaire over 70 billion dollars worth or thereabout he started he knew what i'm teaching you now as early as age eight but it took him at least four or five decades are you seeing that the path to wealth can be accelerated but not rushed you can accelerate it god is the god of speed not rush he gives men speed but he does not rush men Tarry in jerusalem as desperate as i want the gospel of the kingdom to reach the earth tarry in jerusalem until ye be endued with power say i receive grace to follow the due process that brings lasting wealth say one more time i receive the grace to follow the due process hallelujah number four now the rich always plan and set goals the rich always plan and set goals while the poor are always impulsive and reactive always impulsive the rich always plan if they want to build they settle down like the bible says they count the cost how much will it take us to build okay it will take seven million how much do we have now two hundred thousand it's nothing compared to what we want what can two hundred thousand do right now two hundred thousand can buy at least we can buy four bags of cement and a few sharp sand come and pour it intimidate the devil with it put the cement there and pour the sand and go back home you are taking a step they plan but the, the the poor they behave they can go out in one day i've said it again many of our parents do that in one day they go back and come up with things they don't plan for this is how the poor 
let a poor man enter a boutique he just planned to go and get shoe and his budget was seven thousand but he enters a boutique and the blue light is there everything is shining and they say they just brought this i mean they just came from italy this is from dubai this is from turkey this is original touch it feel it and he's looking carelessness is about to happen right away because he's about to be erratic he's under pressure tell about a guy you don't pass this level now and he say, oh yeah how much how much he say, oh yeah because of you bring 13k he's paying the remain the hundred thousand he took there was for something but because there's no planning he ended up buying something that was not you bought a cloth that was not your size you knew it was not your size but they convinced you so much the blue light made you to see it and you bought it and you went home you are angry with yourself everybody your friend how about you're a bad friend you didn't advise me whereas you were there bragging feeling like a rich man a wealthy man is not embarrassed to tell you no this is not this is this is beyond my budget for now i will plan and i can come back there is nothing embarrassing say how about a guy you you that you are staying in a 20 million naira house he tells you that's not the issue i work based on budget that's how the rich think poor people are always under pressure they just give you pocket money or you get your salary of of 30,000 and you are going and your plan is to go quietly to a restaurant where 500 naira can feed you somebody comes to push you to a restaurant that is bigger than your level and then you go there and while you are buying food you find some other people and they say ah your salary is there we will die with you here until you buy this and you end up spending half of your money have you seen that happen to our parents they collect salary and over the weekend the money is finished they think it's because the money is small the man was saying that when he was a primary staff at a managerial level weekend is still finishing his money because of that mindset always plan and set goals always plan and set goals don't be impulsive don't just do things because you have to do them it's okay if you need to do them at that point and the reasons are justified otherwise do not be embarrassed at all don't get into that pressure of pushing yourself to the wall set goals set goals if you don't need a car don't buy it if you need only three trousers work with three trousers there's no reason having hundred trousers with nothing in your pocket you flaunt trousers around and they look as if there's something in it and there's why not invest in your mind praise the Lord I've told us again and again in this place stop trying to look rich pay the price and be rich there's nothing honorable about trying to look rich pay the price and be rich you can see a wealthy man especially here in the north you can see somebody who is a multi-millionaire and he can just wear his jalabia and wear his pants and just be smiling no pressure he can even enter a golf to the bank whereas the poor man collected loan of seven million bought a car of five million rented an apartment of two million and will spend the rest of his life paying that debt and the poor man just enters there's nothing and he just enters how are you you see him using a simple phone whereas somebody you ask the person how much is it in your your account 500 naira how much phone are you using 130 iphone what six you just bought it it just came out and you bought it nobody to communicate to because you don't have any any collection of rich sensible people who are you sending a mail to how is the mail going to increase your worth hallelujah say i refuse to be under pressure i set goals and i work with goals hallelujah number five the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones oh how powerful the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as tumbling blocks and obstacles very powerful psychological difference between the rich and the poor the rich every time they see challenges number one they never call them problems 
rich men never say problem they say challenges hallelujah and they see challenges as a stepping stone they see challenges and as an opportunity to learn more they see challenges as an opportunity to grow more but poor people let a poor man start a business and it crashes and you hear him regretting is you oh, that told me I've, I've always hated poultry i hate chickens i hate poultry they can die anyhow and the, the rich man says no my own i lost beds three times three sets i lost five thousand beds in one day and the poor I, I can't take that and they remain poor because they are unwilling to step out of their comfort zone the rich see challenges as opportunities look up please for a while how have you interpreted the challenges that have come in your life especially financial challenges hallelujah what is your interpretation of challenges do you see them as an opportunity to learn more, to know more, to access greater light? Or do you see them as stumbling blocks? There are many people today, many people today, they refuse to go and get jobs because one time they got a job and they fired everybody in the company and they have seen that challenge as an obstacle and they want to avoid that embarrassment. Whereas somebody who was poor kept applying, kept applying, and now the person is working in an oil company. Say after me, from today, I see challenges as an opportunity to learn, to improve, and to grow. I change my attitude. I change my response towards challenges. Very powerful. Two people can go through the same thing. The experience will make one wiser and better and wealthier another it will become the reason why he will never move forward hallelujah you ask your parents for instance why have you not set up something now they say look let me tell you you are a small boy that's why in 1970 is it two or three i can't remember exactly i think we did something like that and then your mother will concur yes we did something like that what did we even do we started producing ice and nobody bought it the ice will freeze there they will take light it will melt again it will freeze there and the business packed up and because of that because of that they have seen that challenge as an obstacle they've seen it as a stumbling block hallelujah say i refuse to see challenges as obstacles when others are seeing obstacles i see opportunities please say it when others are seeing obstacles i see opportunity your attitude towards challenges is what will determine whether that challenge will kill you or you will rise above it two people can have a carryover two people can have carryovers for one he just looks and says so this is how my life will end so i'm truly dull that thing they said is not a lie i'm seeing the proof right in front of me whereas somebody looks and says there's no problem this is a challenge i will come back and i will give it to life because of this thing i will establish a university in the future i'm on my way coming i may cry right now but i see it as an opportunity to rise whereas for somebody he looks and says if you like call me a dollar you are right are you getting what i'm saying two people will be um intimidated and, and and affected by armed robbers armed robbers will come into a street and rob every house is that good no but i'm saying they rob the house they seize jewelries seize everything two years after that robbery one family has renovated their house where they broke the glass they have improved on it the armed robbery gave them an opportunity to renovate the house have you seen people like that the door that they broke they now brought security doors whereas one neighbor is still angry using banana leaves to cover the place where they did the stealing and still angry you see him tie it and say everybody that comes to the house they come this is where this idiot came and stole our money two years afterwards he has seen that as an obstacle are you getting what i'm saying now he has refused to move forward whereas one has used the opportunity to renovate his house 
your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will use them as ladders or they will become a load that will destroy you say after me in the name of jesus i change my attitude towards challenges say it again in the name of jesus i change my attitude towards challenges someone was fired two people were fired for one it became the beginning of the tragedy of his life 10 years after being fired he became a miserable man turned into a miserable husband turned into a miserable father and 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 the list goes on and on for someone the moment they fired him he said no the owner of this company does not have two heads i will make up my mind and in three years he's already employing 100 people attitude I know so many people who were fired and they went back to their boss after two or three years they said thank you for firing me it was the best thing that happened to me the giant in me was sleeping that 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 firing letter did something to me i got interested in the issue of finances when they wanted to lock us in the prison when we could not pay the sound right sometimes <laughs> challenges can be a gift brothers and sisters it will shake you the day the landlord says come out and he's packing your clothes out and you're saying oh god don't embarrass me i will go but just wait in the night i will run and give you your key and he says no way this morning here and now carry your pregnant wife and your twins and go out of my house and you are now you are embarrassed and you are moving with your wife pregnant and twins and people are saying look at irresponsible men how can this man the twins and then the woman is still pregnant sometimes it will take you to the cave of adulam like david and that's where you begin to sit down and say look something is wrong i'm getting something wrong challenges really bring us to the place of destiny they create defining moments in our lives but your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will stay there or not hallelujah is god speaking to us so the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles number six are you getting blessed the rich have great courage and persistence the rich have great courage and persistence whereas the poor easily give up poor people easily give up they start a business it does not work they quit they start building a house it does not work they quit but the rich they are courageous people when one door closes they force another one to open when one strategy fails they start another one wealthy people are highly courageous people they are persistent very persistent hallelujah you can see somebody who is rich five years after he told you in the name of jesus i'm coming out of poverty nothing has changed in his life but you come and meet him and his goal is still intact you laugh at him and say bros why are you fooling yourself just just agree that it's not your turn to shine and the person will tell you i'm still reading the book five years from the time he made that decision he's still studying the books he's still growing he doesn't have a car yet but he's still growing he's still staying in the old house but he's still growing you knew him with that one trouser five years later on he's still wearing it but he's still growing that's a rich man his status will most certainly change what have you given up on god gave you the direction god gave you the grace but he never told you the road will be easy preachers lied to you that if you are anointed it will be a bed of roses preachers lied to you that if god is with you it will just be a walkover preachers lied to you that if you are anointed you will start a business and it will be flawless because the holy spirit is at work in your life that is a lie from the pit of hell failure is a prerequisite in the school of success you have nothing to tell me if you have not failed in life you have not earned the right to counsel me if you do not have a track record of failure what you see today as your failure will become your symbol of wealth it will become the throne that you will sit upon rich people have failed you cannot imagine you cannot imagine how many times 
they will start 10 businesses all of them will fail they will do a lot of things it will not work but persistence and courage when everybody is criticizing them they are busy working when everybody is saying why must you keep doing this eh someone tries to ask two ladies out you ask the first one say sorry i'm already engaged you ask the second one say no 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 god has already revealed my husband to me you are not the one after two opportunities you will never ask a lady again to get married to because you sit and say kai me i, I can't i'm not a fool i can't be taking embarrassments like that. you will marry oh let me tell you in advance if you don't take the courage to continue ladies shout continue every door cannot be closed no sir one door will most certainly open hallelujah very important are you a courageous person are you persistent over your goals or do you just give up easily i refuse to give up in the name of jesus you're a pastor here you you started a walk and it looks like nothing is happening and you are truly called but you are about to give up you are a businessman about to give up you are a family man about to give up refuse to give up and i tell you at the other side of your pain is celebration like a woman right when she goes in to deliver there are times she may want to give up and the midwives and the nurses are encouraging her and telling her don't worry don't worry say is it like that for every woman or is only me they say it's like that just just give up don't, don't give up for instance and then they continue motivating her and finally the baby is out sometimes she may need to go through cs as painful as it is the baby still comes the bible says do not be weary in well doing he said for we will reap in due season if you faint not but if you faint you will not reap say i refuse to faint let me give us two more and then we'll move to the formula for wealth hallelujah ready number seven the rich are great risk takers while the poor are always afraid to take risks wealthy people are great risk takers they step out of their comfort zone and they walk on water if i perish i perish if i fail i will learn from it if i succeed let god be praised poor people are the easy goers hey be careful oh eh? you want to buy a golf and start a transport business somebody said you know the way nigeria is they will go and hijack your car somewhere have you not seen people minding their business and armed robbers entered and carried the car from the garage and went with it the rich are great risk takers not foolish risk takers but great risk takers in 2010 when we were having the kingdom wealth summit i taught them that the spelling of faith in the world of finance is r i s k spell it r i s k when you are spelling faith in the finance world that's how it is spelled you must take risks you must take risks not foolish risks but you must take risks it's a risk to marry it's a risk to be single it's a risk to start a building project it's a risk to get a job don't you know it's a risk to transport yourself from here to sabo every day for work is that not true you can have an accident something can happen god forbid but a crisis can break out something can happen that can affect you is it not a risk but it's a risk work taking when you tell somebody you want to marry him is it not a risk you are willing to submit to a man whose ideologies you are not exactly you are not 100 percent sure of. you don't know what he can become yet you are willing to do that it's a risk life is a risk not taking a risk is a bigger risk you must take risks this ministry is a risk nobody gave us a guarantee that crowds will be inside and outside faith is spelled r-i-s-k when the people were setting up the sound in the morning none of you signed an agreement that by five o'clock you will be here none of you signed an agreement but it took courage we had to step out 
haven't prayed, haven't fasted. We have believed God and we are taking a risk. Miracle service is a risk. You don't know who is coming with whatever sickness. People can bring the dead. People can bring anybody. But you, you are willing to take that risk. Are you willing to take risks? Or you are part of the easy people? When I was in secondary school, there was a Babin saloon called Easy Does It. You do that for life, you will fail. Oh, just, just take it easy. Don't, don't do this. Customers didn't come today. Close your shop. It's a sign that God is not with you. Who told you it's a sign that God is not with you? It's a sign that you are growing. It's only a witch as a baby who will just get up imagine that a woman gives birth to a child and he just stands up mommy where is the food that's a that's a wizard that's that's an illegitimate child that's that's a that's a, a breed between angels and men that's not a pure human being and jesus grew everybody say it jesus your king of kings he grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men if jesus grew you must grow hallelujah lastly number eight the difference between the rich and the poor the rich have a positive mental attitude please write write it write it down as fast as you can the rich have a positive mental attitude please pay attention to what i'm telling you because after this i'm about to teach you what i call the grand formula for wealth and abundance i give you a guarantee I give you a guarantee that anyone that diligently follows this, even the dullest of us, if you follow what I'm giving you, you will be rich. And rich does not mean buy a car, buy a house. That's survival. The rich, write it down please, have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. While the poor are easily influenced. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves and are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. The poor, they fundamentally have a poor esteem of themselves. And so, when people begin to talk about them, they are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. So many of us are here right now. So many of us are here. The opinions of people is what has stopped you from being rich. What will they say? What if I fail? Will they laugh at me? The other time, they saw me frying Akara and the news spread around Samaru. So what? So what about it? Have you forgotten that if you remain persistent, those who laugh at you will laugh with you? That the reason why they are laughing at you is because they are secretly intimidated by your persistence. Criticism is simply an opinion harshly expressed. It's an opinion. There are people today, Joshua Selman is to them a great man of God that they love. There are people today, Joshua Selman is a devil and a fake man of God. There are people, Joshua Selman is whatever they want to call. I learned by experience to ignore the opinion of others and to move forward if you follow what people say about your life they will kill you and ask others to come and see your dead body whether you do well they will talk about you whether you do bad they will talk about you they are still talking about jesus and we are still talking about satan everybody in between will be talked about so deliver yourself tonight in the name of jesus christ from the influence of the opinion of others they are spreading rumors around that i like money is it true no mind your business say see i heard that you are the one that said i'm, I'm not i'm not 
What the, look, let me tell you. Trying to defend yourself is the quickest way of trying of, of giving people an impression like what they are saying is true. They now start using wise sayings like there's no smoke without fire. There can be smoke without fire. Ask those who smoke cigarettes. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Sing it one more time. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. let them keep talking while you produce the results anybody can say what he wants to say about you please brothers and sisters hear me don't starve yourself of sleep because of what you think people are saying can i tell you something no matter what people say about you the world is full of troubles very soon they'll forget about your issue another issue will come and supersede your issue so you can as well let the sleeping dog lie are you getting what i'm saying now if a lady runs here right now and says this baby is joshua selman's baby i've told people i will only ask one question online how did you get pregnant online are you getting me not that i'll sit down and say hey, hey, hey i need to gather a committee now my reputation is at stake i'm a dead man already let the one who sent me defend him if he's comfortable with it fine and good ah i i will never stab myself sleep because he say i called you i called you you didn't pick that's how all men of god are that's your opinion am i like that no so i go to bed learn to frustrate useless opinions in your life ah mama this and that is a wicked woman every time we come to fresh water the way she looks at us are you wicked no so mind your business but you start running around the whole new extension telling everybody how about you ma you know am i wicked is it not me that gave your child school fees no 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 save yourself all that nonsense rich people have a healthy mental attitude don't think they will not talk about you just like you have spoken about others let me assure you your turn is coming when you see someone gossiping and talking just pity him and nod your head because his own is coming good measure pressed down shaken together yes for sure you have not started a church and you are criticizing every man of god must it be like this must it be like that the day you start a church and for two months you are looking for one volunteer to be part of your ushering team at that point you will know it takes grace leadership wisdom and audacity when you see preachers preaching and you see men of god standing up to concord to what they are saying they can relate with it are you getting the point when you fast and pray the gentleman stood here to give testimony and he said it's not easy to stand here you think it's easy to stand here and jump around until you come and stand here you won't know whether you hold the mic with your left or right hand i once watched some a christian comedy show they were doing an auditioning for comedians these guys are supposed to be the funniest people in their various places and they came together and when they came together i was just looking i didn't laugh for one minute they were afraid their jokes disappeared archbishop benson idahosa said until you do what somebody has done twice don't talk about him after two years you mean this guy still has a small shop like this how about god don't fall our hand and then the day you open your own that looks like looks like a restaurant and you find out that nobody comes from morning till night you will do bonanza 50 percent nobody will still come at that point you go back to that bros and say bros you did try you're well done say after me in the name of jesus 
I have a healthy mental attitude about myself and I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dream say it I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dreams they will talk about you they will laugh they will scorn you it's a sign you are making progress may your life not be so boring that your critics ignore you may your life be the news in their secret place that every time they are talking they say my god they are trying to criticize you but they are announcing you by extension so many people came for koinonia as a result of criticism they came to find out what is all this how can a young man be so anointed and when they came some of them from outside their headache disappeared when they crossed in and they sat down at the end of that meeting they have brought more than 50 people to koinonia criticism can be a great tool of publicity don't stop yourself from shining is god speaking to us Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance. Pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. hallelujah the day i found this key i shouted i not oyedepo's i will never be poor my own i shouted shouted where is the document let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till jesus returns ready write this down the formula for wealth and abundance i told you there is an exact formula there is an exact formula. Ready? Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive. Will always. Write always in capital letter will always be in exact proportion the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do number two your ability open bracket your skill expertise proficiency and then you can close it your ability to do what you do your ability to do what you do and number three the difficulty in replacing you The amount of money listen listen the amount of money we receive this is a law please listen i'm giving you a key that will set you free forever the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand for what you do number two your ability to do it and number three the difficulty in replacing you look at what you just wrote the 
the demand for what you do your ability to do what you do and the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you this is the grand key the irrefutable law when you break prosperity to its unit the atom of prosperity is this the amount of money joshua selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what i do my ability to do what i do and the difficulty in replacing me the difficulty in getting another alternative to me let's take it one by one number one the demand for what you do this is the formula for wealth brothers and sisters i searched and i found it every millionaire i studied every billionaire i studied every wealthy family every wealthy church every wealthy business subscribe to this formula The amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me the amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do your ability to do what you do and the difficulty in replacing you write this down never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it this is what makes a lot of people fail financially you are answering a question nobody is asking hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying now look at this look at this if if this is my business for instance the level to which i will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this is that true if there is no demand for this who will pay you for it nobody so many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide the first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it if there are no children in a place why will you sell pampas there is no demand for it are you getting what i'm saying never try to start a business when you want to get a job trust god to get a job in a place a corporation a firm where there is a demand for their service nitel in nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service are you seeing that now when there was a demand what happened they were rich they had money are you getting what i'm saying typewriters those who sell typewriters today if they did not change will they be rich because there is no more demand never try to provide any service when there is no demand this is the reason why ministers have their churches full because there is a demand for what they are giving they think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel hear me koinonia this crowd inside and outside is here tonight because there is a demand are you getting what i'm saying this ministry is excelling not just because god called us god called us yes but we are responding to a demand for as long as there is a demand for my anointing i remain relevant for as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that i teach they will continue to be relevant The amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion not to what you do the 
the demand for it you started a business you never found out whether there was a demand for it that's why when wealthy people are about to come to africa and start businesses the first thing they do is they send envoys representatives to come and give them statistics they are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand they will never come to africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail they will still succeed that's how the wealthy think is god speaking to us write this down continue the points that you wrote at first you either create a demand first when you want to provide any kind of service spiritual financial educational whatever you must either create a demand for it first open bracket through exposure orientation and advertisement you either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand look up please okay write, write it down and look up you either create a demand for what you want to offer that means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it let me tell you something look up this is the key behind the wealth of Igbo people i'm not being biased an Igbo man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for that's the reason why when others are running away somewhere he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there unconsciously unconsciously many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling as at as at when the phones come into nigeria it depends on which one you are talking about generally nitel had one thing like that what our protocol used now right that's how it started now watch this did you know that until phones came in terms i mean our wireless mobile communication now until phones came we we had that one that you dial right you touch it and then it goes back you continue and then it goes back seven three one four two and then your state code you you remember that right watch this some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology and they said no we have something to offer and this is what they said these people do not know about that possibility so we use advertisement to create a demand when they brought out indomie in nigeria what happened they use advertisement and you are watching they show a beautiful lady and she picks up the the indomie and she's taking it and you are just celebrating what they are doing is they are creating a demand immediately after that you say eh, please go and buy me um, this and that and that they create a demand for it or they meet an existing demand write this down always respond to demands and you will be rich respond to demands i think it was the last school of ministry students i was teaching them on finance in school of ministry and i told them if i'm to do business in a crusade ground i won't sell pure water if i'm to do business in a crusade ground i will do mobile toilets is there a demand for it you are joking you are joking sooner or later no matter how bold you stand you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m in the afternoon for a night vigil Abba, you will need to ease yourself and i won't be there you will even know it's my own but you just see me smiling the goodness of god as they are worshiping i will lift my hands Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand so I look for the demand what are they looking for so desperately that they will be willing to do anything may God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground you will demand my service a thousand times and that's good for me that's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want as far as my business is concerned it may look messy but forget the money is not dirty you don't defecate on the money right are you learning something tonight 
when a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming i want to give you a secret a big secret right now many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class when a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high listen your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes let me explain to you what i mean there is a way there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up the demand is too high that you become too big to fail are you getting what i'm saying absolutely look at this how many days did foil go off in nigeria i mean i know there's still there are still pieces of scarcity but remember the time when all the marketers went within 72 hours nigeria lost billions it literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy is that true huge demand for energy there are certain values that when you provide it becomes almost humanly speaking impossible to fail because the demand is 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 overwhelming pure water pure water will never fail in nigeria till jesus comes for as long as there is sun there will be need for it we drink water like camels in nigeria you finish one bag of have you seen people take water somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange take another one take another one that's money going five five naira or ten naira if it's cold right and 15 naira just disappeared right now bang, 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 bang. and the person selling it is smiling and the person consuming it is paying every day you must bath at least i believe yes you should bath i'm speaking to the wider audience not just you there are thousands of people full right so the demand for soap will never stop and the demand is so high every day somebody's birthday photographers will never run out are you getting me restaurants will never pack out if they pack out is a demonic thing because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day if you are busy or you don't have money at least once if you are fasting that's all right praise god i'm showing you that so many people are poor because they have not responded to demands those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself it's a law whatever you cannot do guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves always write this down please let's hurry up always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it i repeat always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand the demand watch this let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand watch this as a man of god do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest because there is a high demand for that grace are you getting me there is a high demand Usually, the largest crowds come during the miracle service. There are people who, because of distance, cannot come for every service. But during the miracle service, they will pay the price and come. Hallelujah. Because there is a demand. So, if 
the demand for this anointing continues koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher are you getting what i'm saying now is there a demand for what you do or are you just doing it have you ascertained that there is a demand the office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed never try to answer a question nobody is asking the second point your ability to do what you do we said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability your skill your expertise ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do skill and ability there is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance please never forget this there is a direct relationship between skill between expertise between competence and proficiency and financial abundance it's not enough to be anointed it's not enough to have something to say or just to talk there must be skill there must be skill you are enjoying what he's playing because although we're in a spiritual house there is skill you see that i'm preaching you think i'm just talking until i break down the psychological implication of the things i'm saying and you see all the things that are interplaying in the midst of my sermon you are laughing in the midst of my sermon i'm rebuking you in the midst of my sermon i'm challenging you all of this requires skill it's not just anointing are you getting what i'm saying your ability to do what you do i love how some people that peel orange have you seen those people that sell orange they are so flawless you bring orange to them and you see them talking they're just talking and peeling it when you see a master do something it becomes flawless that's how you must be if you want to be rich don't think rich people are dafts rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise we pray in tongues we fast but organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it they think it's carnal they think it's not spiritual so the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people you enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them and so they throw you out of that place you speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground there is a lot of skill and proficiency to it if you think it's so easy try it and you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger that's why you won't know what to say again you will know that it's not just about cracking jokes there is a skill not just a spirit the bible says and david led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands david did not throw goliath just through the anointing it took skill the benjamites theologically speaking they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows in other words you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it they were that skilled so don't you think god just came upon this guy samson was not just anointed alone he was skilled bezalel have you read about bezalel the spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him the three hebrew boys the bible says and in all the matters that they were tested in they were found 10 times better how many times in what you do do you have ability or just desire you set up a restaurant nobody likes your food something is wrong there is a demand for it but there is no skill and you think it's demons you are fasting and running around your parlor whereas you should go and settle down and meet a ketra not a mediocre a ketra by the truth 
it will cost you by the truth wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something you would think it's a waste you are paying somebody one million just to talk to you but they value it that much how many believers can pay for knowledge they don't want to they just want to receive average and so they remain mediocre is god speaking to us it takes skill what he's playing he didn't just learn it by the anointing an anointing came upon his skill the fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice what skill are you lifting up to god to anoint he said he will anoint the works of your hands i'm not just talking of business i'm talking of skillful business see yet thou a man diligent 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 skillful many preachers are not skillful many business people are not skillful many employers and employees are not skillful skill is not just an impartation it is learned it is learned it will cost you you will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn but are you willing everybody say ability i made a vow in my life that everything every service and every value i want to offer my generation i will be a master in it let me tell you as you see me like this don't don't let these suits and all these things deceive you i'm such a workaholic you would not like my life you will like me when you see me on suit standing if you come close to me you will run away from me because my life is irritating there's no room for laziness whatsoever there are things i do every day no matter how much i'm tired do you think preparing for this you don't want to know how many books were read you don't know how many books i read how many materials i consult to just bring one message one message that you just hear for two hours you don't become wealthy when you are lazy if you must bring facts how many videos i've downloaded on youtube listen to them in fasting and prayer converted them to mp3s to listen to them listen to three hours six hours videos and summarize them in major points work on them edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it that's hard work brother and all that is for one sermon that you just receive and say wow the sermon is impressive are you getting what i'm saying i returned back we I, we went to peter on saturday and then on sunday i was there on monday tuesday i passed through abuja to kogi state to go and greet the family of of our dear one who transited and from there i returned the school of ministry students were there i think it was it was yesterday right i returned as i returned i just went to take my bath and rush we were here having lectures from six to about past ten i had barely rested when i got up and then i had to plan do a lot of things had to run to town see a few people this afternoon i am here first thing tomorrow morning i'm off to kaduna we have a meeting in kaduna from kaduna we're passing straight to kano for an evening meeting sunday we are back three o'clock on the dot there is lecture school of ministry monday there is counseling from morning till night and next week is my birthday hello don't you ever hold on don't talk we'll talk about birthday after the service if you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money change your mind tonight you don't know how hard they work there are people six o'clock their shops are open they close past 12. there are others who open to 12 and they close to seven skill diligence You get up and you say you're a motivational speaker and they ask you what is success you say, according to brian tracy according to you what is it you get up and you're a preacher and all you are doing is copying and pasting messages as you are preaching they'll help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from and they will tell you the site you downloaded no originality it takes skill you think it's easy to to buttress points i can communicate any point and sing a song to support it listen 
it's not just anointing it is skill right you know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well you just know every time you hear them you are kneeling down find out how many things are out of bounds for them things they love so much he that desires mastery is temperate in all things what are you willing to give up to be skillful don't just say ah apostle is blessed guy koinonia is lucky oh wait until you see our leadership trainings wait and see the 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 the, the workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders wait and see the way we build them you come and see the the various departments you think these guys are just standing by default look at the ushers standing and position they have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing go for a meeting somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves but you before you get to the ground somebody has come to hold you it's a skill because they are holding people who are bigger than them there is a skill we are that meticulous so don't just say god is prospering koinonia guys you are blessed we are blessed through skill hallelujah let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere skill and expertise is the key is the key to promotion and increased salary you see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss tell him be skillful be skillful then you can pray stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful let me tell you something i humorously tell people if i'm your boss and you are not skillful i can be a good pastor to you but i'll fire you and i'll fire you because i'm a serious christian hallelujah i will never entertain a worker in church for instance i mean maybe there is I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere and you think because we are members of koinonia you are not serious you will never get the job never get the job i don't do all those kinds of things say remember we are from the same place whether we are from the same room if you have not demonstrated the skill if you are so much of a liability for me i will bless you with direct money so that you will go but not to commit things to you he gave on to some five some two and one according to their several ability not their prayer request their ability their ability i hammer it on the workers to be skillful and it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice you must become skillful at something you must become an expert in something you can't become jack of all trades and master of none you have to lay your hands on something be a master in it and i guarantee you you're on your way to the wealthy place you see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on demand for your service is not enough you must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand write it down demand for your service is not enough you must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand The person who babs me is here in koinonia he's so skillful i love him so much and he babs me no matter how you love me i will not submit my head to you to play around with i don't have that luxury i love you i can i can i can help you i can teach you but i won't do that how many people are not skillful in what they do we are prayerful but we are not skillful see i receive grace to be skillful let me tell you the truth skill is an asset skill is an asset if this guy is so broke if he is so broke today that nothing moves all he needs to do is go to a hotel in abuja just ask for permission to sit somewhere and then he will begin to play and someone will see him and say can you come and play for one program what's your cost and he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill the next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill 
not at the mercy of God alone at the mercy of your skill man of God your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry your leadership skill your financial intelligence what you are receiving right now there are people standing outside no seats for them there are people looking through the window they are passionate to receive that skill and I guarantee you in a short time their lives will show meditate on these things the Bible says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. There is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful. It's a combination of grace and power. Anointed and skillful. Not only that you are anointed to sing, you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional. You are a businessman. You are not just a businessman offering services. You are exceptionally skilled. When your contemporaries look at you, they name you after your competence. You walk in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill. Even your enemies will recommend you and say, please promote this guy. We hate him, but there is nobody in this company who can do it as him. I gave you a story of somebody in this country. He works three jobs, three jobs, and he works only three times in a week. He is so skillful. He is the brain behind many successful companies in Nigeria. I will not mention the names of the companies. You will be surprised. They beg him. He works only three times. Three times in a week. And the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is 500,000. Minimum. And he works only three times. Skill will defy race. Skill will defy gender skill will defy age if you are skillful the world will honor you that's why wole soinka received the nobel prize nobody said you are from africa that's why zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people skill defies age i'm giving you a key if you sit down in mediocrity, you will beg for bread. I choose to be skillful. In every area, I choose to be exceptional. I avoid premature manifestation. While others are running, let them run. I will stay back and I will sharpen the knife. You are a drummer, be skillful. I've hammered on these guys. You don't want to know how skillful these guys are. I've seen their diligence. Our technical people, we emphasize skill, not just anointing brothers and sisters. It takes skill. It takes skill. It takes skill. The difference between CNN or BBC and one Christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill. It's not anointing. You watch some channels and you are angry. You are angry. Did they have to do it this way? They want cheap labor. Rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this, they refuse. They say there's one brother who offered to help us. And they remain in mediocrity to their detriment. Powerful message from the throne, but nobody can listen. Many people try to write books and they don't consult with people. They bring out a book that is, the message is deep, but the skill, the artistry in writing it is not there. T.D. Jakes wrote one skillful book, Woman Thou Art Loose, and he made four million dollars from one book. Four million dollars. Multiply that by 210, and it will give you the Naira equivalent. One man's skill, build him out of poverty. One skill. You have written 10 books, nobody even knows. Because you wrote every, you wrote like you are talking. They didn't teach you that there is a skill. You stood somewhere and you sang a song. And the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again. Were they blessed? Yes. Were they embarrassed? Yes. Why? You had anointing without skill. You had access to cook for a millionaire. You would have been his personal chef. You blew that moment. You were praying in tongues in the kitchen, but there was no skill. The food burned. Everything went wrong. Skill.
Papa Adeboye said this himself. He said when the redeemed campground started, he said that they, they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place. They were more focused on the spiritual impact. So people would come, CEOs, managers, billionaires will come and sit down and heat will, will disturb them and it was making everything uncomfortable and God spoke to him and he said a CEO has AC in his office in his jeep he has AC in his parlor, bedroom, kitchen everywhere there is AC and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me i have seen the fruit of skill in my life i have seen it exceptionally as i travel to go for meetings i not only see the beauty of anointing i see the excellency of being skillful the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Skillfully dividing it. When I go for meetings, we go together with the protocol and the worship people. And I watch them as they look at me. When they say, let's now welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. And people are clapping. I'm happy because I have the skill. There's nothing you can do about it. I have it. I paid the price and God gave it. I am grateful, but I'm not apologetic about it. I know the people are going to be wowed. Just give me 10 minutes of audience and I will shock you. That's all I need. And when I pick up the mic, I know what to do. With wise counsel, make war. I know that at the end of that meeting, somebody will invite me again. It's not pride. It's the truth. You can be that confident. Skill. Please, when you go back home throughout this week, some of you, as you go home, just sit down and think of your life. Please, don't be in a hurry to sleep. You've been sleeping for years. Wake up this night and think. And say, look at how I've been playing with the opportunities God has been giving. Everything you do, nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful. They ask you to supply clothes. You supplied nonsense. You packaged it in a rubbish way. You delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way. And they vowed not to give you that opportunity again. We're on our way to better days. Now you can sing the song well. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a song. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Yesterday when I was coming from Abuja, a woman met me. And then when she met me, she wanted me to talk to her on some things. I spoke to her on a few things. And when I was talking to her, this woman was looking at me. And she said, what kind of human being are you? Where are you getting this? And I was on my way going. I said, on my way, I'm on my way rushing. And she said, please, can you give me a minute? And she ran to her room. And this woman brought out an envelope with dollars and said, take. I said, no, 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 no. What is this? Please, no, no, I'm not, I'm not ready. And she squeezed it into somebody. And I said, this is somebody's salary for how many months? The gift of a man. The skill of a man. I don't talk too much about my private life, but I just want to challenge you a bit. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. Are you getting what I'm saying? I hardly buy things for myself. People bring it in honor. Skill. Do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you? Yes, you may be born in Nazareth, but don't die in Nazareth. You may be born in Nazareth. God is speaking to someone here. They think you are a non-entity, but may your skill prove them wrong. May your exceptional qualities prove them wrong. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Write this word down. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. 
to be valued means to not be easily replaceable write this down when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage whatever you want to call it when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult right when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you you will be very wealthy yeah you will when your uniqueness or your strategy or as we call it in the business world your competitive advantage when it is so unique that it stands you out you can get another joshua selman but not easily see that there are many preachers but there is only one joshua selman there are many anointed men but there is one joshua selman no man can clone the grace no man can close the can clone the skill no man can clone the uniqueness so you carve a niche that is free of competition you carve a niche that is free of intimidation you stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness because it's not easy to find a replacement if you are easily replaceable it's a sign that you will be broke let me tell you how you know you are not valued your absence is easily forgotten and ignored when your absence is easily forgotten when your absence is unnoticed it's a sign that your impact is small yeah if i come to work in your company even if it is one day i will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it it's called value the amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you when there is no alternative to you they will pay whatever price you will name your price you will name your price hallelujah i have taught people these things it's difficult to get another mic these guys are all skillful it's difficult to get another elijah it's difficult to get them no they are all unique david dam is here come all these guys you see they are skilled people but they have their uniqueness there is a way david dam is so unique you cannot clone him no matter what happens there is a way sam comes on stage and you know he's in a class of his own what do you have in your life that truthfully you can say when it comes to this god has put me in a class void of competition some of you is only trouble that you are in a class of your own gossiping all these bad bad things that are bad bad qualities that's what you are in a class of your own tonight change everybody is selling but there is a way you do yours the day you don't open your shop people come and there are five shops open but they are waiting for you they say but can't you buy say, mm. there is i like that smile there is a unique touch to what you do there is a way you do what you do you are the happiest staff in your corporation the day you don't come the entire workforce is gloomy they are, they are sad they miss you some of you nobody is missing you right now it's bad it's bad it's a serious issue think about it nobody is missing what you are giving ATC called me this morning and they said they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play a football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? It's a serious question. I'm not intimidating you. Who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you? You are saying there is no money. There are people they are chasing with money. People bless me every day. I say it in, with all humility. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. When you are not easily replaceable, 
you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business they need your news to remain relevant even your enemies desire you to continue are you that unique or you are just general i'm a general businessman general talkative what do you sell television what is unique about why should i come and buy tv from you and not from someone else do you have that uniqueness what do you do i plot who have you plotted many people what is your uniqueness is it that you plot on time is it that you plot well is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot what is your uniqueness I refuse to be easily replaceable. I refuse it. Pray that prayer in one minute. I refuse it. Please pray. I'm showing you a key. We're not done yet. But I just want you to pray it. And then we'll do an evaluation quickly and we're out. Pray. They have belittled you because you are easily replaceable. You have refused to work on yourself. Money is available, I tell you money is available the millions are available you are not yet unique enough to be rich you have not qualified for the world you are grumbling about it you are complaining for five years you are still at that lower level somebody came a fresh graduate you paid his school fees he's now your boss to what degree are you easily replaceable pray lord may i be so unique that i become an asset an asset to all and sundry may my absence create a vacuum that cannot be easily filled i'm ready to pay the price to be that unique world class not a local champion you may start small but you hold on to strong convictions convictions that nothing will bend not cultural barriers convictions that nothing will bend not the limitations of your past convictions that nothing will bend pray an award-winning banker exceptional an award-winning ceo an award-winning man of god so anointed so unique you become a standard you become a leader you become a reference it's not a gift it's a reward it's not a gift hallelujah do this and in one day you will get what somebody will get in a lifetime somebody who earns hundred thousand per month how much is that per year how much is that per year 1.2 million how much is that in 20 years 24 million someone can give it to you in one day as a reward to your uniqueness the lifetime one day my father looked at me and said you are an old man you are a young man with gray hair what sort of person are you May people look at you like Jesus and say what wisdom is this they look at you and wonder they don't know what to say about you let me tell you something stop responding to your critics the only response you give your critics is greater results greater results let them keep talking the gap will be too wide they will be forced to shut up continue moving let me tell you what you are seeing in ministry right now the level of excellence and the anointing is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will show you what i'm doing today in my mind i've left this level no i've left this level i've left this level gentiles this is what will make gentiles come to your light and kings to their brightness millionaires will come and they will queue up they will queue up one woman asked me a question she said my son how come people come for counseling hundreds of people and they sit down from morning till night just to talk to you for two minutes and five minutes i didn't know what to tell her i said it's the same reason 
why a baba or a rich man will run backward to see a herbalist and the herbalist say turn back and he will turn back he knows what he's looking for when you hold the keys to the door they will look for you they will beg for you they will pay you to open the door oh i found my way out of poverty i found my way out i found my way out there is an eternal demand for what i do i will never run out of relevance there is an eternal demand for as long as there is one soul that is not yet saved there is a demand for as long as there is one sick body that is not healed there is a demand for as long as there is one person one family under oppression i will be needed for as long as there are people who need to be taught the principles of the kingdom i will be needed the, the, we are an endangered species a million of me is still not enough to fulfill the demand you say you are a leader how uncommon are you one time i went to speak in a, a, a small business leadership conference and i sat quietly there were bank managers and people everybody came and was just bragging and talking stories and speaking rubbish i was very disappointed in all humility because i had high expectations for them i didn't know how much i had worked on myself they spoke and everybody spoke nonsense and i came out when i spoke brothers and sisters i tell you the truth and i i lie not I do not know how many complimentary cards and all of that and all of that and they were talking and I looked. I said on a good day I will go to their offices and they will drive me out. Now they are following me with complimentary cards. Stop following success. Attract it through your diligence. Stop chasing money. Attract it through your skill. Stop chasing money. Pay the price and you will drive it away and it will refuse to go. It is for this very reason that doctors, lawyers, engineers, soldiers are very rich. This very reason. Those we call professionals. This is why. Because of um, they are, the kind of work they do requires a lot of skill. Right? Their professions require a lot of skill that cannot be learned informally and then they require public licensing and authorizations to function so it limits the number of people that can imitate them that's why they are rich if you've ever wondered why doctors are rich engineers architects and all of the people that do what we call professional courses is because there are licenses and to get the licenses and authorizations you need to pass through something and not everybody can do that so they are few and the demand for what they have is so high and they can set any price any price may you be so powerful that you can name your price and people will still pay you and say thank you for helping us the same way you queue in a filling station you are going to use your money to pay for the fuel but you will say thank you because it's so much in demand there is none of you under the sound of my voice who will work what i'm telling you and will not be rich no not one write a few things down we're rounding up number one you do not seek money directly write this point it's wrong i'm looking for money is an error you will never find it it's not missing you don't look for money directly money like health and happiness is an effect it's a byproduct you don't look for it directly you don't look for happiness directly you look for the things that bring happiness right you don't look for health directly you eat well and it produces health so you don't look for money directly money is an effect responding to a cause money is a byproduct of carrying out a formula stop looking for money you attract it i'm looking for money you will never find it never find it you may not like me tonight but you will tell me thank you tomorrow 
when you become a billionaire and your colleagues look at you and say, Hapa, didn't we school together? He said, but we didn't hear the same thing. Hallelujah. You only set it as a goal and then you seek to provide services and solutions to increase your skill and bring it into your life. I'm summarizing to you right now. Two ways you get rich. Number one, you get rich by increasing or improving the service that you offer. You need to sit down and birth ideas for bigger services. What is a better way to do this? You need strategies. So I'm still buttressing on the first point. You need to increase the services, whatever it is that you render. I'm telling you the truth. Repent of that cause for that, that thinking and that ideology of trying to get something for nothing. Listen. You can come and meet me today. You can tell me your problems. I can talk to you and I can pray with you. There may be financial problems. I will look at you. I may give you minerals or malt or apples or whatever and tell you God bless you. But I will be willing to carry one million and give somebody who can solve my problem. I was always willing to give. You were not willing to receive. Are you getting that? Many people, you come to many people's houses to beg for money. They will not give you money. But they will carry 1.5 on their way to the bank on Monday to go and deposit it. The money is always there. You don't get it by begging. You get it by offering service. If you solve a millionaire's problem, you have access to his millions. Valuable service will give you the keys to the wealth of people. I have met billionaires. I have met millionaires. I'm shocked and surprised to see the way they honor me and respect me and respect Koinonia. There is a woman, she's a billionaire. She jogs with Koinonia messages every day. She's passionate about me. I was with her yesterday and I was amazed. Do you know how valuable you can be? The people you are admiring today will admire you if you do what I'm telling you to do. They will admire you. There are people who I used to call sir before. Today, I've met them. I still recognize them, but they don't recognize me. Many of the people who criticized me in the past have come for counseling today. And they never knew that I was the one they were criticizing. They came and waited for hours. And when they entered, I said, man of God, it's a privilege. I've been hearing about you. And like Joseph, I said, God bless you. How can I help you? And they say everything there. Many of them criticized and said all kinds of things. But their children recommended them to come. And now they keep, they are now seeing the Son of Man in power and glory. Oh, then he was a shepherd boy in Nazareth. Why will you remain this way after this teaching? I will weep. You saw me, I sat down here and I was, I was almost, almost shedding tears, honestly. I'm not an emotional person at all, but there is a very soft side to me. Because when I sat down, I was praying while the worship team was ministering. I said, Lord, will your people respect what I will tell them? Or must they suffer to a point that their lives are almost becoming miserable before they receive it? Many of you are doing well. Parents are helping you. You are not taking care of your finances and so you may have very little value for what i'm sharing until the day you get married and you find out that you are the one who is the breadwinner that's when you go and check the dictionary and find out the meaning of the word breadwinner it means the absolute provider unassisted absolute provider and then you will now review this message again but the earlier you start the faster for you hallelujah you start the faster for you and then you increase your skill I told you you get rich by increasing your service and then you increase your skill in what you currently do even if it's to get a job there's part three of this and in that one I'll be teaching you multiple streams of income I'll be teaching you certain things 
the ocean never dries because every stream flows to it mm. i will show you the mystery of genesis chapter one the secret of unlimited abundance and there was a river that went out of eden and parted itself into four i'll be teaching you on multiple streams of income the key to oceanic wealth the very key ordinarily i'm supposed to stop here but then we'll go the extra mile because i hope that this becomes my contribution to your finances that what our parents did not get we are getting so that you are not without any excuse then you can sing that your status is changing it no longer will become a cliche you become magnetic absolutely magnetic it will look like a charm but money will look for you wherever you go personal evaluation write this this is an evaluation for you to go and work on just three questions i'm about to ask you thank you jesus okay i'll give you five ready number one just write personal evaluations these are questions that you answer we're out of time so that we can pray sorry we're taking a bit of time but i think this is this is worth it right number one what are the major solutions or value or service i provide that's the first question you are going to ask yourself write it down be absolutely clear about it what are the major solutions what is the major value what are the major services that i provide as a person as a man of god i provide spiritual solutions for instance that's what i do as a man of god I, i'm not just a preacher i provide spiritual solutions right and i know the exact solutions i provide i'm bringing people to the point of intimacy and passion for god that's a spiritual solution right i'm helping them to comprehend the principles of the kingdom i'm offering spiritual solutions using the word of god and the anointing of the holy spirit that's the value that i'm giving to you so i'm a businessman this is my product i'm giving you valuable service a spiritual solution i'm connecting you i'm bringing you to closer intimacy with god and i'm teaching you the principles of the kingdom that guarantee for a victorious life and a purposeful life that's value i'm adding to you and then i'm i'm solving solutions i, I mean i'm providing solutions and solving problems supernaturally on friday is going to be miracle service another reign of miracles and the anointing of the spirit that's a spiritual solution there are people who are coming barren i spoke to a woman eight years barren next week she's coming and her problem will end that's a spiritual solution somebody is coming who has been buffeted by darkness and light will come spiritual solution this is why i will remain blessed it's not because i'm preaching the gospel it's because i'm giving something are you seeing that now this is why preachers are rich this is why preachers are rich how can i call on your name and end up in shame no, no way. way no, no way. way i will not call on your name and end up in shame no way no way listen every situation that brought you here has a way out that you do not know the way does not mean there is no way you know sometimes david Dam said something when he came when i came in he said something that so ministered to me we get used to our challenges we get used to the wilderness that we conclude there is no way out you can wallow in this forest of pain and confusion and conclude that your life has to be like that from begging to begging from pain to pain from beating to beating no as a family you can come together and say no more there's something we are not doing right this way is not age dependent this way is humility dependent you can be 60 years wallowing in the forest of confusion you can be 10 years and find the truth the bible says and ye shall know the truth we are getting there 
but there is a path there is a path number two jesus the truth give us again please john chapter 14 verse 6 there is jesus the truth he said i am the truth let me tell you what that means i am god's opinion on all matters I am the most valid information that is worth trusting. I am the truth. I am God's perspective on all matters. Listen carefully. Jesus the truth is a description of God's mindset. It's a description of God's perspective. Not just the way now, but an encounter with God's perspective. Life has a way that they teach you to operate but it says i am god's perspective i do not lie there are all kinds of lying statistics in our generation are we together and god says come to me i have a report too federal this and that international organization for this and that came up with their own statistics about several things but come to me i am the truth I am the truth. Are we together? Yes. Oh, one out of every two marriages must end within five years. Jesus said, that's their statistics. Come, I am the truth. There is an information I supply you. Every, the average age range in Africa is 43. Jesus said, I am the truth. The truth says in old age, you will be fat and flourishing fat and flourishing not using your pension to continue living fat and flourishing there are informations that the bible gives and tells men you will never make it we live in a generation of decadence but let's look at the truth psalm 112 112 first four verses if i were you and i'm a gentleman here i will receive it you're a lady receive it for it praise ye the lord Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his truths. What will be the testimony of that man? Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Regardless of all the ambrobas loitering around society, his own seed. Because he has believed an information. He said, who has believed our report? It is to that man that the arm of the Lord has been made. The arm of the Lord does not just come to those who desire. It's those who, there is a report you must believe. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3, wealth and riches. Not shall be in his environment, in his house. And then he says, and his righteousness endureth forever. Verse 4, unto the upright there ariseth light in darkness. Do you know what that means? Deliverance. Deliverance. A man who stands for truth. A man who understands the way of God. Somebody must arise to bail you out when things go wrong. Let me tell you. Do you know rescue is an anointing? There is a grace that can come upon you and cause men to arise. David was in the cave of Adullam. They were looking for him. Saul was looking for him and the Bible says certain men came. They enter the covenant with themselves and say, you must be king. Not everybody is interested in helping you. You can sit down loitering around begging, give me a job. And somebody has eight options. Eight options. And he looks at you and says, it's all right, just go. But when you understand this, when that truth becomes your shield and buckler, it does something. It compels men to react to you in a certain way. Everyone say, Jesus, the truth. There are many of us here seated now with lies in our bodies. Satan has used objects in our bodies to lie to us. There are medical reports that we are seated here with right now. HIV, cancer, a killer disease somewhere. There are ladies holding reports you will, you don't even have a womb in the first place. There's no possibility of a child. There are men holding reports. There's someone, oh there's a report. You are going to die soon. You will not reach December. But the Bible says, whose report will you believe? The doctors are doing their best. We have doctors here. But it's their educated opinion. Jesus said, I am the truth. You go to school, they teach you to believe certain things. But when you come to the word, he teaches you. 
I am one minister of the gospel who believes in God. When I read my Bible, I believe. And I, if I believed it, I will draw all men. That's the truth. So my job is to lift him up and then he will draw all men. That's what he said. That's what he said. That when men say there is a casting down, the truth about it is that you will say there is a lifting up. So I expect a lifting up all the time. Because you see, a true believer is a possessor. Tonight you have come here. Koinonia is a place where we tell you the truth. And shortly the power of God will prove that truth to you. That what you call a hopeless situation is only a relative statement. When you come before him, he can turn your wilderness into a fruitful ground. Hallelujah. Everybody say Jesus the truth. Son of man, what information do you know about these bones? Can they live again? And he said, Lord, I, I honestly, the reality of these bones, now I don't know. And he says, look, these bones can live. I believe therefore prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded the truth is not just an information it's a force it's a force that compels things to look like god no matter what it is the truth is god's mindset philippians chapter 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the truth is that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover the truth remains true regardless of your experience or otherwise you see this is the thing about a believer your personal experience is too small to judge the validity of the word of God if I die of sickness today, God is still a healer. Is that true? The information I'm sharing with you is very ego stinging. Because when you've tried everything you know to do. Have you seen people say, I've done everything I know to do. Or I've done everything there is. No. You just did what you knew to do. But there can be another way. There can be another information. Someone can be trying to open a door. Simply because someone told him, turn it once. And he tries, tries. And then another information comes in. Lift it up. Turn it two times. Just because of that little information, that person can stand there two hours wrestling with that door. Arise, shine. Your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. John 1 verse 5, the light shines in darkness. Arise, shine, the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I will arise and shine, arise, my light is come. And the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is Give us Isaiah 60 verse 1. If we can get it in Amplified, that's wonderful. Otherwise, no problem. Amplified says this. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Arise. From the depression and circumstance and prostration in which circumstances have kept you, rise to a new life then it says shine be radiant with the glory of god let me tell you something there is an information that when you catch you can start laughing at your challenges you will not even pray about it again it will turn to laughter because you know that that truth will squeeze it into pieces i tell you this hallelujah ah jehovah will be your everlasting life He'll be your glory, your strength, and your sight. The light of the moon will be 
like the light of the sun and the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright when Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world heals all the bruises inflicted by this world truth there are things I found in my life about ministry there are things I found in my life about the anointing when I found them I jumped jumped Bishop Oyedeko will tell you that light broke and he screamed and turned and said yeah I will never be poor again there are other people who have caught certain things and they screamed and said I will never be a mediocre again what have you found? I found your word and I did eat it it was a joy and a rejoicing he said my son eat thou honey when you find this thing they are alive to those who find them not to Christians there is something you can find Believe me, brothers and sisters, if you have not found it, you will think those who are talking are arrogant people. There are people who have found things. The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a man who had a treasure and it was missing. For as long as it was missing, that man was redundant and then he took light and then he started checking it. Are we together? Could it be that there is an information that you need to know about God about life about yourself it was Gideon who was hiding because there was an information he did not know and all of a sudden the angel appears and says in case you do not know here is an information you are a mighty man of valor and Gideon said nobody has told me this I am the least in my father's family and we are the least in the tribe and that man arose from that revelation I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Everybody sings, say. of Jesus shout it say it again in the name of Jesus the days of ignorance are over in my life prophesied say the days of ignorance the days of lies the days of deception are over in my life lift your voice and pray in one minute Lord I entertain your light there is something you can know about you that will bring you into the anointing there is something your mother told you growing up. You are a failure. But hear the truth. Hear the truth. There is something Africa is speaking to you. That we are a third world nation. But in the name of Jesus I declare. I believe the truth I believe the truth no more lies in my life everything that is not consistent with the Word of God I refuse to believe it why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change hallelujah please sit down so they may look at you and say, sister, you are getting to 40, no husband. Will you ever marry? That's their information. You see, when you introduce Jesus to the situation, the calculation changes. Uh -uh. Something that should be zero. Just because you introduce the reality, everything changes. The psalmist said, I had fainted, but God. I had fainted. I knew that I was over all. But God, when they brought him into the situation, it changed everything. Stop listening to lies. There are lies on TV. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are lies that we hear on newspapers. 
Oh, stop tithing. All those men of God are out to collect your money. It's with your money they use to buy clothes. And they rob you and you listen to a lie. And stay back and authorize Satan to destroy you. Our society is full of lies. People make money through lies. Jesus, the truth. There were many things. I didn't see many successful people in my life growing up. Those who were successful were very far from me. Culturally speaking, societally speaking, there was a mindset that was communicated. But when I began to search the word, goodness, I found another report. A report I was not born with. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. You know, today we took a stroll, um, myself and the head of protocol, after we went to greet a bereaved family, we went somewhere and I was taking them inside the campus and I decided to take a tour of the new structures they are building. And while I started passing some sites around the dam and down my eyes were almost, I was trying to fight tears. Do you know why? Because I saw locations where years ago I sat down to study the truth. I passed one place, a botanical garden on your way to the dam. I used to enter that corner and smuggle myself through somewhere and sit down. Broke, but had access to the truth. A failure and a mediocre, but had access to the truth. And this Bible, God gave me an assurance with the word. If you believe me, I will not play games with you. And I was stupid enough to believe. I said, Lord... After all, by default, I don't even have much. So if I don't believe you, I don't have any option. Ah! Look what is made in my life. Listen, if you choose to believe the truth, he will change you. They've lied to you that your life is not doing well just because um, there is... There is, uh, there is something you are not, you know, you need to go and connect to this. You need to do that. I believe in favor. But favor is only when it comes from God through men, not from men. If you don't give 150,000 to so, so, so person in federal ministry of this, you will never get a job. That's how we do it. You are not part of the we. And you find out. And the Bible says, that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, that's the truth. That he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Are we together? Listen, the part of scripture you find and believe is the part that works for you. Yes. You can see two people operating on different dimensions of realities. Is the part you find. I have found from this word listen and i don't want you to be offended by what i'm saying but i found from this word that it is possible for a man to fulfill his days i found it i used to fear death i think it's one of the things we all fear because the teaching i got about death was that any day can meet you anytime and it looked like a very sincere talk until i searched I said, God, but how can I live my entire life being afraid? I'm going to live a life traveling all the time. Right? I'm in the air, I'm on road. In the morning, in the afternoon, there are armed robbers, weather conditions. What is the guarantee that I'm going? I mean, I can't live my life. I'm going for a crusade somewhere and I'm afraid. I want to go and heal the sick, cast out demons. But me, the man of God that God will use, you are now afraid whether you arrive safely. As soon as you arrive, your heart returns back and you are like, thank you, Jesus. What is torturous way of living? But there is a truth. Ha! Ah. There is something you can hold and dear death you look at it in the face and say oh death where is thy sting now you see until you have caught that truth don't make mouth this is the problem we talk nonsense in church and say all kinds of things and become victims it is the encounter of the burning bush that qualifies you to stand before pharaoh when you have seen the burning bush you can stand before pharaoh and say hey pharaoh stop oppressing god's people because Pharaoh will not let you go just because you can speak English. Jesus, the truth. Let me tell you something. Life 
will dare you to your face it will take the truth to build a world of fortification are you hearing what i'm saying i believe the word of god that's why we're gathered here tonight this is called a miracle service there is no guarantee anywhere that anybody will be healed there is no guarantee anywhere that devils will be casted out let me tell you without understanding the truth any action you take is arrogance you make a fool out of yourself what is the guarantee that in the next few minutes the lord is going to step in and begin to produce miracles in the lives of people is the truth as at morning when they were fixing this place what was the guarantee that people were going to come and all the seats will be filled what was the guarantee that people will be following us from over 45 nations of the world is the truth there is an information you know the power of god that i believe you oh god and i'm ready to follow you will not lie to me i believe you you are not a man that you should lie not the son of man i don't doubt him i believe you my experiences notwithstanding i still believe you number three jesus the life hmm. a revelation of his power and his ability to make a life jesus the life john 11 verse 25 to 26 an event happened there lazarus was a man who had died three days and then jesus said he sleepeth and they were going to go and resurrect him and when they went they saw his sisters crying now this was talking about physical death but it applies to every area watch this death does not just mean cessation of breathing it means cessation of life many of us are experiencing death in different areas of our lives when an organ fails that's death are we together the sons of the prophet were eating a meal and they looked and said ah there is death in this food and jesus said to her i am what what is resurrection bringing back to life something that is not supposed to have life again hallelujah that for me is the definition of hope 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 bringing back to life a dream that should not come alive again bringing back to life a destiny that should not come alive i live my life drinking and smoking is there hope for me jesus is called the resurrection i should have done well with my life but i'm 70 years now how many more years do i have when the resurrection comes he can bring back to life are we together i should have been a phd holder now but so 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 and so happened to me when the resurrection comes listen to me jesus has the power to make things that are dead in our lives come alive this is good news are we together so the bible says rejoice not over me my enemies you know my fall but you have forgotten that there is a mystery of resurrection rejoice not over me yes i know for now i do not have a job i lost my job yes i know that this and that may have happened in my life but there is jesus the life he can put life back he can put life back let me show you something the bible says very interesting well let's finish it i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me although his kidney were dead he can come alive he that believeth on me although his finances were dead he can come alive do you know that hopelessness is is one of the major causes of depression in our society you know what hopelessness is a perception that there is no press to anything that is worth producing any result again and people just give up society is full of angry people who just walk around and say look there's no hope no hope for this child no hope for this no hope for me again no i'm already past menopause no child let me just agree 
that I will never have a child in my life. Listen to what the Bible says. Job chapter 14, please give it to us, 7 to 9. Job chapter 14. Read it with me, please. One to read. For there is hope for a tree. For there is hope for Joshua Selman. For there is hope for any life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For there is hope in spite of that medical report. Humanly speaking, you should put your house in order. Ask Hezekiah. When a true prophet came and said, Hezekiah, I've heard from God. When a man hears from God, who else do you consult? But Hezekiah said, no way. I know this mystery. There is resurrection. There is life. There is hope. He turned his face and said, God, let's talk. I know Isaiah is your prophet, but I'm your child too. Let's talk. Remember now. Come on, God. Don't act as if you ignore me like that. And God said, ah, 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 ah. He has compelled a dimension. Listen, let me tell you. Tonight, you have to insist for some things to come back to life. Don't come. Some of you don't even pray over some things again. Because in your mind, you have concluded it's over. That business will never come alive. Let, we just give glory to God. It's over. It has gone. That destiny will never come alive. But it's okay. I already know that I would never walk again. My leg can't walk. So my focus now is to just succeed. I am the resurrection and the life. It says, for there is hope for a tree, if it be what? Cut down. I like that word. Cut down, not rooted out. Cut down means the root is still connected. The mistake the enemy made was to still leave you loving God. I, I, I know you lost, you lost joy, you lost peace. You made a mistake. I know you now have a baby. It should not be. But the mistake was that you were cut down not rooted out and the bible says that it will what sprout again talk to me agriculturists that you know that you can cut a tree and children can even put satellite dish on the tree yet it still starts growing have you seen a tree that they use for pole wire it doesn't stop the tree from growing i hear the joy coming Hey, I hear the breakthrough coming. I hear the sound coming, sound of abundance and joy. I see the lifting coming. Hey. Hold on, listen. I tell you that. that the anointing of God is strong upon me. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Give us that scripture again. Give us that scripture. Because God wants to make a statement with this miracle service tonight. He says, for there is hope. Everybody say there is hope. Let the devil hear you. Let all the people who have sat down together in a meeting and say, will she ever rise with this carryover? With 11 carryovers, will you ever rise? The Bible says there is hope for a tree. There is hope for a tree. It says that it will sprout again and that the tender branch will not cease. We are reading to verse 9. Though the root thereof be wax old in the earth and the stalk thereof die in the ground. Verse 9. Yet... Hold on. It didn't say through the arrival of water, the scent, proximity to life. Proximity to life. The moment you come into a place where there is life, it has not touched you yet. Your roots resonating with life. Listen, listen. Those of you who have done physics, there's something they call resonance. Is that true? That when you use a tuning fork and hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency answers to it. You were designed by the life-giving spirit. So when Satan tries to bring death, and then you are seated somewhere, you come into an environment where there's life. Deep starts calling on to deep. Your dream starts telling you, I'm ready to come back to life. Forget the fact that I failed.
rejoice not over me my enemy we live in a society who are experts at burying people before they die ah look at this mama nine children all useless and she's coming for koinonia and they say keep going mama tonight the resurrection and the life the resurrection and the life hear me how about a man of god you know god called you you know he anointed you but truly you have not seen increase not in your life oh god well will the anointing come or maybe you were once anointed and something happened in your life and things went down and listen it is true that jesus died but did he die forever he died only for three days while he had resurrected men were still talking about his death could it be hold on could it be that some of you while you are in this meeting now other people are talking about your past life they don't know resurrection is happening they are still sitting discussing yesterday so every time they look at her they say i know this lady oh this lady is the most nonsense lady in our environment you were right but ask rahab shabbatos kotapriata listen do you know why god instructed that they killed everybody in jericho he did not want anyone who knew rahab's past to be part of those who follow her because she would be part of the lineage of jesus listen when god wants to make nonsense of satan he will keep quiet and allow men finish tearing you down sometimes you can even join them and tear yourself and then when he's done he says let me now show you the expertise let me show you what makes me god and he starts building many people conclude on men because they don't know god this god we serve are we together i always use promises promise come 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 with all my heart you would have concluded this guy was a capon in black acts are we together years ago with dreadlocks he came to zaria with dreadlocks and earrings he was an occultist of the highest order a territorial commander he ran away because they were about to imprison him but brothers and sisters rejoice not over me my enemy no 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 help them under the anointing please you would have concluded that this brother will never become a because our big mouth in society we are experts at talking about people but while they were talking about saul god was seeing paul ah. apostle but i don't even know who my father is i'm not sure they told me that fair woman is my mother that's the kind of background i came from don't worry the god of israel is an expert look at his life now a fiery man of god with grace and power and anointing hallelujah they had concluded on zacchaeus you are a thief you are a fraudster you are an armed robber and when god was going he had to climb the tree and god said come down zacchaeus is your house i'm going let me show you that I'm, I'm going to your house and at once zacchaeus said i will repay everybody and zacchaeus completely changed hear me i came to preach to someone tonight there is a dimension of jesus called jesus the life the life the life jesus the life jesus the life jesus the life, jesus the life. That everything that has died in a man's life can come alive even time can come alive that's the God that we serve hear me you have come tonight some of us from far some of us from several things and you have come to encounter Jesus the life the life-giving spirit he can put life back to your finances and the money you lost 10 years combined in one month can return to you listen 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 please let's not make this thing look as if we are acting we're talking about god here apostle but this is 10 years no child 
and they told me that there are all kinds of cysts and growth in my stomach and then when the resurrection comes he all of a sudden first child triplets second child twins you say god stop he says stop what my name again that child one three two one registers his name the years that the canker worm has eaten hear me hear me mordecai mordecai did something that was good and he was his testimony was archived in a book and dropped quietly you see ba there is a day god gets angry and vows by his name i have seen this truly speaking that god vows a vow read it through scripture that he wants to lift a man when god vows a vow to lift a man i tell you not even your personal faith will stop you there is such a thing that god can say the appointed time is come i've seen people lifted overnight and frankly speaking sometimes they've not even understood certain principles god just vowed with his name tonight i want your faith to be please look listen you have come before god this is not a cinema to watch film you have come with your heart open i want you to insist tonight all these three dimensions are dimensions that for a taking but i perceive that one of the greatest dimensions we need is life there is too much death there is too much death in people's life dead organs hold on listen there are people here they can't walk 10 minutes a young man 25 35 you walk 10 minutes you breathe as if you would die they go to the hospital and say mr man almost everything we see is wrong you need life oh you need life there are many ladies here with all kinds of lumps all kinds of demonic things satan attempting to put another life because there are many kinds of life but when his life comes when his life comes there are destinies you look at them like walking corpses you know everything is there no favor no open doors there are many men here you are hard working but there is no life you are just a body walking sweating toiling the cause of hardship from morning till night living from hand to mouth the key is not promotion the key is life life to draw from you again hey, hey. To drink from you again. Yeah. To drink from you again. Yeah. Yeah. We've come to the road. We've come to the road. The road. The road. The road. Come from you again. Come from you again. the same tonight i insist lift your voice and pray lord i can't go back the way i came i place a demand a demand on your anointing
Prayer point number two change my level, oh God. Change the dimensions. Take me to another level. attention praise the Lord hallelujah there's a lot to do tonight we're going to do it in this order I'm going to take the altar call now and then tonight we're going to start with the sick I just sense a very strong manifestation of the healing anointing hallelujah now quickly let me have your attention my God the power of God is so strong so strong I already see activities of angels you're in this place inside outside any of the overflows one two three four by the roadside i told you that the cure for the challenges of men is an encounter with jesus and there are people here some of you may be visiting for the first time but you know that you need jesus genuinely not just as a religious philosophy you truly need jesus christ some of you at one point you handed your life over to him but things went haywire and right now you know that you need to run like there's fire on the mountain overflow one overflow two i'm going to count one to five please clear the way for them i want you to run as though you are thirsty and they told you where water is leave your seat right now and run whether you are inside or outside i'll count one to five keep standing one koinonia celebrate them Two, are you running? Run to Jesus. Lord, I'm tired of my life. Tired of the way things have been. I can't pretend it. I'm running to you now. Three, celebrate them. Are you running? Leave your seat. Break your pride and run. I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus in my life. This is a, a matter of urgency. This is no pretense. This is no church. I need Jesus in my life. Have you decided to follow Jesus? No turning back. Run! No turning back. Have you decided to follow Jesus? No turning back. No turning back. One more time. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. I'm 
have seen three people in overflow three there and the holy spirit is telling me they are supposed to be part of these people overflow three please quickly there's so much to do there are three people i'm seeing in overflow three outside and the lord is telling me they should be there don't allow your friends stop you i'm still going to give one more minute one more minute as the holy spirit is convicting you you're saying i want to come but i'm a bit shy run make your way quickly come and join us come and join us hallelujah look at me please let them come and join those of you in front please look at me i salute you this is serious business here please there's there's nothing to be ashamed of hold on hold on now you see when most people give their lives to christ they come in emotionally and some are not even serious they come laughing pinching themselves lord jesus and they are laughing and not serious this jesus business is life we're not talking about a certificate we're not talking about a husband or wife the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower please hear me as you are here make sure that your decision is genuine no one condemns you but i want you to mean it please don't don't play games with god this is the god of heaven i want you to say this from the depth of your heart all of you in front here and those joining quickly if you are joining them make your way to the front say this passionately and truly say lord jesus say it again lord jesus some of you are not saying it say it one more time lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for my sin I believe that you resurrected for me this night I have heard your word and I declare that I need you in my life I hand over my life to you from now and forever I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that from today I am a child of God satan you had my confession stay away from my life forever in the name of jesus let me pray for you now jesus we present to you the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and they were worth your blood your tears and your death i ask oh god by the power of your spirit that you preserve them let this not be an emotional decision i pray sincerely that today will become the beginning of a new season of your grace your power your mercy upon their lives i declare your sins forgiving i declare and declare that from today you walk in newness of life i set you free from everything that holds you down in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i congratulate all of you for making this most noble decision never forget this day never forget this day hallelujah praise god now i will ask you to do something very quickly and then you come back and join the service i want you to follow who is waving his hands follow that gentleman waving his hands and they will lead you out and there are a number of people who will welcome you have your details please cooperate with them and uh, all the people attending to them let's make it fast so that they can return back Please politely follow them. They will ask for your details. Cooperate with them. Everyone this way. Let's honor them as they go very quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we help them? Let's make it fast. Now, we're going to do it this way. Um, I'm going to start praying for the sick right, right away. We're going to pray for the sick now. So that we can take out time. Um, let's deal with the sick first. I already sense a very strong manifestation of the healing anointing. Lady, look at me. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. I command that devil. Let her go now. You had her confession. I curse you by the God of heaven. I released you now. I'm seeing this lady tied snakes from her leg to her head. 
I set you free. This is Koinonia, the place of encounter. I decree and declare that from today, you are set free. And there's something I'm seeing in your stomach. I decree and declare that it leaves you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we are going to pray. Uh, there are certain cases I want to deal with by myself tonight. Um, any case, please listen. Any case, whether you are in any of the overflows, please, I will pray for people. Overflow one, I want you to match to your overflow. Those who are trusting God, you came here with for yourself or for your loved ones. Um, but let's do it this way. All those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, if you have an issue with barrenness or a blood-related disease, HIV, cancer, or any deadly disease whether you are in the overflow outside or what please come in and i want to minister to you myself hallelujah that doesn't mean please listen listen it doesn't mean if i'm not the one ministering to you you will not be blessed the anointing on me is upon everyone who will be standing to minister to you are we together now so let's not have a rowdy um a crowd there so overflow one i like all of you who are trusting god to be prayed for Please, I want you to move to your projector stands, overflow two, um, overflow three. Those online connect by faith and um, we are going to be praying for you. Those inside, make your way very quickly. The special cases that I ask, make your way quickly, quickly, please. We have to be very fast. There's a lot to do. The reason why we take our time to minister to people like this is because God has anointed us for this reason. Hallelujah. God has anointed us. It's a privilege to carry his anointing and we must take our time to release blessings to God's people. Make your way quickly. Look how many people need the touch of God. What a joy and a blessing to have the anointing and the ability to touch people. Can we all pray as a family whilst they are coming and ask the Lord to touch and heal and bless everyone. Lift your voice and pray. Everyone, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Pray. It's a miracle service. Please, those that are coming in from outside, make sure it's only blood-related diseases. Terminal diseases. Terminal diseases. Otherwise, you can just wait at your projector stand and then they'll pray for you. Father, you have anointed you have anointed us in this place. You have anointed this house to be a tabernacle of miracles. Lord, you have produced untold testimonies. It's a privilege to be extensions of your hand again, ministering to the needs of your people. It is your desire that in every territory, there must be a place where men and women can find the power of God at work. And Lord, thank you for making this such a place. Tonight we pray that there will be abundance, abundance of your anointing in the name of Jesus. Tonight is serious business. I really perceive that there is need to minister to people. We are going to have um, some of our leaders stationed in various places. Please, I want you to trust the anointing upon them as they come to minister. I'm going to just make contact with them. Um, there will at least be two, two at different, different points and then we are going to pray praise the lord we'll make it very very fast and trust god to minister to you please come um pastor femi Ejimi, pastor alpha west benga promise how many of you i think we need eight people i have to lay hands on you because i sense that we need we need a, a great one two three four five uh, michael come one of these days we'll begin to train other people and help the, the idea is to help and build people um, might leave the keyboard um, someone else can play the keyboard you can come this is an opportunity we're going to lay hands and then we're going to trust God um, Shade will you be strong come she's always had the healing anointing you have the strength please come this lady you see it's a compendium of the healing power of God and um, so we're going to pray I think this is okay we're going to pray 
please those outside if if they don't ask you uh, if they are prophesying to you it's a different thing if they are giving you a word of knowledge it's all right otherwise you don't have to start talking talking and doing all of this lord we agree right now in jesus name my god there's such anointing on my hands as they lay hands on the people lord i decree and declare let your power flow in such dimension in such magnitude in the name of jesus christ let the anointing of the holy spirit come upon you in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let the fire of god come upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that you will carry the anointing of the holy spirit um shade and promise will go to the overflow outside here by the road shade and promise benga and um femi this overflow and then mike and pastor alpha will be at the overflow overflow three now um Ejimi will be with me here pastor alpha um huh? okay two of you are there okay fine who is left michael okay then join them outside this overflow here and then we'll walk with Ejimi inside here praise the lord lord we decree and declare let there be miracles right now let there be signs let there be wonders in the name of jesus let there be such a strong move of the spirit let the sick be healed while this is happening please um i want you if you need to make calls and ask your loved ones to submit their prayer requests let's do that very quickly we're trying to conserve time as well as maximize the grace that is available hallelujah lord we give you all the praise in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ so we'll pray for you now i want you to trust god for miracles trust god for miracles insist that god must give you a miracle hallelujah praise the lord as we worship in your presence there is healing the holy spirit gentle touch is flowing jesus in the name of jesus christ i believe jesus there is healing in your name as we worship as we worship in your presence there is healing the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, gentle time is flowing. It's flowing. Jesus, Jesus, I believe. I believe. Jesus, Jesus, there is healing in your name. Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, gentle, gentle touch, touch, it's flowing. It's
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit gentle, gentle touch, touch is blowing in this place. I want you to believe that there is no power holding on to your destiny that will go back with you. Please believe this night. There are strange spirits that are responsible for the sufferings. You see this dear lady? This lady came all the way from Lagos. Had to resign her job to come here because she was tired of what was happening in her life. It's not just about employment. Came here. This lady came, I think it was last week, all the way. Because she was nothing at all. She was employed, but oppression after oppression. There's somebody in the congregation. I'm, I'm seeing like uh, the Lord is opening my eyes. This is strange. And I don't know what it is that I'm seeing that has to do with elephants. I'm seeing an elephant. And I'm seeing like fire coming. This is a deliverance for someone in the congregation now as I'm talking. Um... I'm praying for the sick, but we're going to minister to other needs. But right now, the Lord is asking me to minister to such a person. So I'm declaring right now that every manipulation of spirits that resonates with what the Lord showed me, right now from here, I decree and declare there is no peace for the wicked. I command judgment right now in the name of Jesus Christ on such a person, wherever you are, in this congregation i decree and declare right now that the power of god touches you right where you are right where you are right where you are in the name of jesus right where you are right where you are in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone at the minister's stand the minister's stand i'm seeing something like an arrow shooting out of your body lord in the name of jesus whoever that person is it must go now I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every strange devil, every strange spirit, we decree and declare that this environment is completely not conducive, completely not conducive in the name of Jesus. I want you to look at this. Look at, look at, what, look at what the devil can do. This is a human being's face. Mama, come. Madam, is this our mother? How long has this been? This is one year now. A year one plus. Year. A year plus, yes. Her face just started swelling. It started bleeding from the nose. And before you know, it's her, one of her eyes. I out. prayed for her the last time. Yes. You see it going down? Yes, I see it you going You see it down. from the last time? Yes. Who was there when you saw yes. the last time? It's going down. You see it going down now? Yes. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, that the way this thing has started going down, it must go down normally. And hear me. Mama, any human agent that is responsible for this thing happening, are we together? If I am a man of God, that person must die this night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm looking at you. Hold on. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the face of a woman. And I'm seeing a woman sitting on the ground on ground like enchantment i say it again whoever is responsible for terminating attempting to terminate the destiny of this lady by the god of heaven may the ground open and swallow her now god bless you see let me tell you something brothers and sisters wickedness is very very real very real very very real very very real i want you to lift your voice in one minute and say father judgment tonight pray lift your voice everything that must give way for the next level of my destiny to be open i command it so now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray inside, pray outside. Pray by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Pray. 
Zaka toko 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 kes. Rekete kete kata bara 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 bas. Mata kato sepre kete. Lente pre kete basa bara 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 bas. Leke ta pros kata bara nda kapras kata bara tos. Are you praying? Make sure you are praying. Let her go now. Out. 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 I see the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. I see the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. going to pray seriously right now um, I've been seeing a lot of visions while praying for the sick hallelujah there are, there are many many demons that must go many not few many oppressed all kinds of um, strange strange demons bring this girl come bring her I'm seeing a spirit bring her let her go now Victory belongs to Jesus. Listen, hear me. Now, we are going to pray serious. That's why I took out time to maximize the healing anointing because um, we want to finish fast. We have leaders meeting. However, um, now that we have dropped this, please just focus. You have prayed now. Let me minister to you. Praise God. Stand up, please, everybody. We have to pray. These are the wicked spirits that are responsible for families families tonight i see an uprooting i tell you listen i want you to stand because i'm seeing people running out now by the spirit not like wanting to run away the spirit's running with them that's why i'm saying i'm i'm asking the people to stand we're going to pray please listen i want you to believe the forces that tie your life tie your destiny it's time for us to pray it's time for us to agree are we together i want you to cooperate with me and let's pray they are strange spirits you will bring them out some don't be embarrassed this this has to do with families this has to do with individuals are we together now are we together yes we are going to pray i'm seeing like a ghana must go and i'm seeing it tied in the spirit whose destiny is that oh god it's time to be loose now bring them out Please, I need strings, strings of the flowing sound, please. Bring them out. Shake it, take it up. Braka doso toba shata. At his word, every demon, every devil. There's no hiding place for any power of darkness. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus. Bracato shoto breke teli abada. Hallelujah. Please hold your hands together. I want to pray a prayer. You are going to help your neighbor now. Something strange is going to happen to people. I want to pray because I'm seeing like fire passing from people to people. This this contact must be maximum. Lord, I pray. Anyone who is a victim of any oppression, as this fire passes now, in the name of Jesus. Once you see your neighbor manifesting, please let them come. In the name of Jesus, I release that fire right now. From road to road, from people to people, from road to road, inside, outside. I command every stranger, every stranger, every stranger, in the name of Jesus, every stranger, 
outside overflow one overflow two overflow three online i cost that devil right now that fire is burning that fire is burning every principality every power Shaka -ta 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 -ta. outside mighty deliverances outside from road to road the power of god is setting people free it's time for yokes of captivity to give way it's time for age long captivities to give way Hallelujah. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Say in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of delay over my life, over my family, be judged now. Now watch what happens to you. I decree and declare, anyone with such yoke, I command judgment now. Judgment now, now, on those forces. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Please lift your hands. Shabaratos Kotosh. Tonight I trust God for an extensive time of deliverance. Listen, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing snakes. This is what I'm seeing coming out from holes. Anyone here tied by any spirit, they come to you in the night to sleep with you. Fire at the count of three. One, two, three. Right now, visitors of the night, strangers of men's destinies, I judge you by the God of heaven. Inside and outside, I judge you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Please put your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very serious prayer right now. Sisters, lift your hands. If there is anyone here having any spirit molest you in dreams, appearing as men, appearing as women, appearing as animals, at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, Jesus the life is destroying any death, are you ready? One, two, three. I command those devils, those strangers, strangers, powers of witchcraft, molesting people, the daughters of Zion. I curse you. I curse your covenant. Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome You overcome Say Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome You overcome Hallelujah I saw what I'm seeing now in much miracle service and the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands I'm seeing padlocks that's what I'm seeing this is representing men's destinies nothing is happening in your life you are not lazy but doors have refused to open right now at the count of three I want everyone to shout Jesus as loud as you can some of you will literally be caught up in visions and you will see the doors of your destinies open Right now, oh God, I declare that every padlock over any man's destiny, 
over any man's life at the count of three they are open one two three Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to take away the spirit of death over families. Listen. You may not even know, but I want you to believe. I want to pray for you. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit. I'm speaking now. Death is a spirit. Oh, death, where is your sting? Right now. I'm seeing at least 47. I'm seeing the number 47. Every family with death hanging over them. Fire! 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 Upon every family. Fire! Fire! The spirit of death broken. Hallelujah. Can I pass through the crowd for a moment? I want God to do a quick walk. Please listen. I don't do these things out of religion. It is the presence of God. The presence of God. I don't have time and there's no opportunity to lay hands on anyone. But listen. I just come across your role. I just want you to believe. Listen, except it is not the spirit of God, but any other strange spirit aside from God, regardless of what it is and what is causing in your life, it must give way right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, just play me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Listen, please, I want you to believe. This is not about human washing, but as I pass your road, I'm seeing fire on my left and right. Tonight is the ministry of fire, and like a wildfire, it will pass you and begin to consume things. Some of you, as I pass that physical fire, that heat, Lord, let it be right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Rakoto Shoprekete Baratokosia, Brakato Toto Ketata. Rakato Shabariakata. Take it here. That fire, fire. Judging everything. Judging every evil. From every row, row to row. Row to row, row to row. That fire right now. Every witchcraft, every power. Every witchcraft, every power. Tying anyone. Someone's womb is being loose now. Someone's womb is being loose. Someone's womb is being loose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I go out? Is it, is it possible? Those outside, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Please, quickly, we're out of time. We have to conserve time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, all of you right here, through this place, I'm looking and I'm seeing change in the spirit. And as I pass this overflow, please, I want you to believe that every captivity must come to end. I hear what I'm saying now. It must come to end. Father, I give you all the praise right now. Right now. A chain is leaving somebody here. A chain, a chain, a chain, a chain. Go, go, go. Now, 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 now. Chains, 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 chains. I break it now. Break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it. Now. Break it now. In the name of Jesus. 
you don't have to touch me just be there's somebody here the yoke of delay is breaking now 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 it's breaking now by the power of the holy ghost breaking now break now breaking now breaking now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus Breaking now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a cloud on this place. I release that fire. It's breaking now. Right. Right. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Help them. Help them. Please hold them. Elisha, 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 who is that, Elisha, where are you coming from, maybe you, sir. maybe you, maybe you here, yes, I want to pray for you, the Lord wants to give you and your family breakthrough, yes. Elisha, I wish we had time, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm declaring, what's your name? Daddy's name is Elisha. Your daddy's name is Elisha. That's all right. I'll pray for you. Why are you here? You are Elisha. Look at me. I want you to believe in the prayer I'm going to pray for you. God is going to give you strength in your peace. Amen. I'm seeing like a shrine on fire. Hold on. I'm seeing like a shrine on fire. And that fire in that shrine will manifest physically over somebody's life. It's time for this family to be set free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's time to be set free. It's time to be set free. Elisha, I pray for you. Now hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare something is leaving you now. As I'm holding your hands, I'm seeing something leaving you. Let it go for you and your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your dad needs breakthrough. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord brings that breakthrough right now. The Lord brings that breakthrough right now. Please, if we can get some of the people outside, make sure everyone is protected under the canopy. Otherwise, let's see how we can squeeze some of them inside. Even if it's just for the sake of um, when the rain minimizes, they can go out. Please, make sure nobody is standing in the rain. Those standing at the edges of the canopies, we can allow them to come in. Just come and squeeze them somewhere, please. Make sure, no, especially women with children, please. Please, make sure that we allow them, please. They can come, just stand anywhere. The goal is us, please. Just give them room, just orderly. They can come in and stand anywhere. recurrent issues the Lord is addressing them now our time is gone but I'm praying recurrent issues the power of God is going to fall on people now I don't know how those outside will do but I pray for grace for them but I'm seeing 
a grace to destroy recurrent issues issues that come you solve them and they come back again where are those people i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus that fire is visiting them now recurrent issues the lord is setting people free right now recurrent issues please help this this woman recurrent issues that devil is going right now in the name of jesus recurrent issues recurrent issues never again in the name of jesus never again by the power of the holy ghost please i know it's raining but participate god is touching people i'm seeing it again recurrent issues issues that come and you think you are done with and they return back i decree and declare that fire is coming now that fire is coming now recurrent issues in the name of jesus be set free right now be set free right now be set free right now hallelujah toy What's your name? My son name is Tony. Tony. I will pray for you. I'm seeing serious witchcraft in this lady's family. This is this is heavy satanic oppression. Huh? Heavy satanic oppression all of you are doing what's your name my auntie Who? my auntie's name is Tony. i will pray for you please make sure you are doing don't come out carelessly but hold my hands i will pray for you i will use you as a point of contact to pray for your family hold my hands with both of your hands your family must be free from witchcraft lord jesus ah fire fire on every altar fire on every altar of witchcraft i command i use as a point of contact and pray for every family under the yoke of darkness under the yoke of bondage i command your emancipation now i command your emancipation every family under the yoke of darkness are you towing huh? you have bad luck bad luck on your life very bad luck hold my hands hold it with both of your hands lord jesus this is a miracle service set this lady free this yoke of bad luck i decree and declare that it must leave you right now in the name of jesus christ it must leave you right now your sister in the name of jesus christ i pray for you the same way god is touching her may god touch you too in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus Christ, my dear, you are doing my auntie. Where is she? What is this for? This is my family. My mom left my dad some couple of years ago and became a mother. And her immediate younger sister, she was also a Hold the photo. You believe that when I pray for you, God will touch them. Lord, visit this family right now. In the name of Jesus. I release the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus through you let it touch your family please don't come out carelessly don't come out why why is she out why are you out my dear huh my sister is doing okay I will lay my hands on you be free of your mother your mother something is leaving your mother in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus Kai what is this look at i'm seeing a snake this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing a snake i'm seeing a snake 
I'm seeing a snake. Please just thank God it's raining. If you are inside, don't complain. Those outside are enduring the rain. Just keep quiet and allow God to visit you. Snakes. I saw a snake from this lady and I'm still seeing snakes around. There's no hiding place for darkness. Rakato Soto Prekete Kata. I'm seeing snakes. Lord, let there be deliverances. Let there be deliverances. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside. Let there be deliverances. In the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverances. Let there be deliverances by the power of the Holy Ghost. This lady, come. This one with the blood. God is going to use you mightily. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a, a lady that God is going to use mightily. That doesn't mean after service you come and start disturbing her. God is going to use you. Father, let that grace, that fire, this lady is going to be mightily used of God. I decree and declare, I don't know you, but I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you must be free. I declare, don't worry, deliver. In the name of Jesus Christ, every access given to you by darkness, I close it now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I close it now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I close it right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I close it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I release that fire and that power. There is no hiding for any darkness. Release every breakthrough. Release every destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. I'm hearing Memuna. 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 I don't know if he's here or outside or someone. Your love. Memuna. Huh? Is what? Your step, okay. Memuna. No, I'm seeing something else. I will pray for you. Memuna. The Lord is showing me something else. Your name is Memuna. My younger sister. My youngest. Sister. Okay. I lay my hands on you. Look at me. You are not progressing. Hold my hands. The Lord wants to move you forward. This is not even in the name of Jesus. I release you to move forward right now. I command that you move forward in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord gives you visitations by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ah, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. I lose you to prosper and I lose your family to prosper. You came out to stand for someone, but you are the one God is giving the visitation. I decree and declare it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. You won't believe what I'm about to pray for. I'm seeing written in the air, forgetfulness. There is a strange spirit that comes upon men and causes them to forget things. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Branda katos kala pregedigia. If you are here, whether it is memory loss or strange forgetfulness, the things you should do, you forget them and you pay the price. Wherever you are, I release you from it right now. I release you from it right now. I release you right to the back, outside, all the overflows. Anyone who has that manifestation in their lives, I release them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release them right now. I release them right now. I release them from it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release them right now. Why is he here? Why are you here, sir? Uh, my cousin. Is what? My cousin. We are here last week. But he didn't come today. Your what? My cousin, Tony. Tony. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God touch them. Whatever their issues are, I declare that God will resolve it right now. In Jesus' name. 
I'm seeing somebody I need to pray for. Physical money disappears sometimes from your pocket, sometimes from your bag. I'm not talking of stealing. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't just come out carelessly. Phys money, you can hold money like this and count it and see that it is less. It has disappeared. Who is that? I need to pray for you. It's a very serious issue. Yeah, na 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 na. You? Hallelujah. Kai, the Lord is showing me something very serious. There's somebody, um, don't be embarrassed. You woke up physically in the middle of the night. And now I'm not saying you idolize animals, but there was a rat, a physical rat, not running around. You were looking at it, it was looking at you like this. There's someone like that here. Rat, it was looking at you. You were. Wave your hands. Let me know you are the one I'm talking to. Come out. Come and stand here. I'm not saying if you have rats in your rooms. That's not what I'm... This, this is a special, unique, demonic case. Come. Kai. This lady, I have to pray for you. Favor, zero. Breakthrough, zero. Trouble, 100%. Father... In the name of Jesus, change this face I'm seeing. Jakatos ko prakato zakato dia kata prakanda pratisia. Lekos kapranda gada shuse prekete katos. In the name of Jesus, zekata atata suzia. Mante pros kata prande kato dia kata. Jakas kende kos akras kate zeketons kamatan zekata. Reketo sekete kete kata bakata. Mam prato soto bere kete riakata. Sasesesesekata, ma proto soto topaka, embriata sada siata, shakel katamas katabariakato, embre kete 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 kete, rekos kososo pekete de kata, mebriata sise kotosho pariakata. Break the chains, break the chains, break the chains, break the chains in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is somebody, your grandmother appears to you. Your grandmother appears to you. Where is that person? Come. Don't be embarrassed. This is a serious issue. Our time is gone, but thank God it's raining. We are going to round up. Your grandmother, you see your grandmother. She appears. Who is that? Wave your hands. Come and stand here. It's a very demonic thing. Your grandmother appears to you. Come and stand. Grandmother appears to you. Who is that? Wave your hands. Let me know you are here. All of you that see your grandmother, come and stand here. We have to break you from that demonic thing. What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? This Lagos lady, God is on your case because you need to be thoroughly, thoroughly delivered. There is a spirit that is oppressing you and there is no hiding place. You hallucinate this lady literally sees things. She can be here physically. It's, you know what they call astral travel. She can live. Not vision. Live physically. This lady. I command that wicked spirit. In the name of Jesus. And whatever she sees about you. Except you are powerful. It must happen. It's a spirit. She doesn't even know why. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a cat. I curse you. By the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't be tired. I know our time is gone, but it's raining. Let, let, let's just visit these things because... Come. You are a beautiful girl, but no favor in your life. Shift. Let me talk to this, this yellow girl. Come, run. God wants to wipe your tears. Ah, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing something like a crown on your head. Come, you must be delivered thoroughly. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let this cause of disfavor is a beautiful girl but there's no favor in her life Shato soto bakata randa koto soto kete barakata i decree and declare every legal access of darkness i curse it right now i curse it right now i open the doors i open the doors from the realm of the spirit let there be favor over your life in jesus name hold on sir i need to pray for you 
these encounters supposed encounters has retrogressed your life i hear what i'm saying i have to pray for you because you are not supposed to be at this level right now you too you see your grandmother where are you from calabar no obudu obudu cross river obudu cross river i have to pray for you please if i if i didn't call why are you here are you sure you know why you are here huh you see your grandmother Kai. there's somebody here hold on all of you see your grandmothers don't laugh you see let me tell you this is not some it's not mockery it's not i'm not saying every vision of grandmother is demonic please don't get me wrong these are very special strange wicked and demonic issues special strange wicked and demonic issues someone has fallen down there please let the doctors attend to the person make sure you are your brother's keeper so that they don't fall down and injure themselves hallelujah praise the lord hi you come what business do you have to do with dead people dead people eh? hold my hands say in jesus name say it seriously in jesus name every affiliation with the dead i curse it now i release an anointing upon you now everything you have to do with dead people in jesus name do you love jesus you love jesus huh mm -mm. you are not serious with jesus hold my hands how are you don't be embarrassed but um the first thing you need is your relationship i'm looking at you i can't i don't want to embarrass you but you need jesus seriously i love you eh? that's why i'm helping you i love you with all my heart go and meet the who um where's pastor alpha just meet him he will talk with you you need counseling is your own is not just grandmother god just brought you out here to in your destiny is needed please go and see he will talk to you now all of you who are having these issues i'm going to lay my hands on you now when i lay my hands on you i want you to believe there is this strange kai i'm seeing somebody someone appears to you in the night and when he appears to you please don't come out at random as soon as he appears to you your spirit literally starts leaving your body literally as in you will feel yourself you will come out and you will see you again lying down on the bed there's somebody with that case that situation right now i have to pray for that person right now i have to pray for that person right now something comes pulls your spirit out like he's going i will lay my hands on you all of you are so many father every affiliation with darkness i'm going to lay my hands on all of you very fast sir i'm i'm looking at you and i'm seeing the spirit of poverty and lack serious poverty yes sir eh? yes sir nothing works yes, sir. your life is like a basket anything that enters goes out i'm not embarrassing you eh? you are saying the money truth. leaves your hand even if they give you one million it must find a way of going yes, yes, sir. You are man, but money does not stay yes sir is that true yes sir do you tight yes sir. you are not consistent one two um you see this consistency of tightening is one way to drive the devourer god is not a magician you have to be consistent Praise God. God blesses you ten times. You tight once. Your heavens are completely closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now and I command breakthrough. In Jesus' name. Let me lay my hands quickly now. You're the God of miracles. Amazing God. You're the God of miracles. Go now and cost that spirit.
five minutes and we're out of this place please I want you to believe every prayer that is coming now every prayer Cop. every prayer the Lord is taking you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ a new dimension a new level cameraman God is wiping your tears keep the camera first wiping your tears in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is wiping your tears in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is wiping your tears. This lady, I'm praying God is visiting her family. That lady standing close to Ella. I'm seeing a vision that the Lord is going to show her a breakthrough. I'm commanding right now in the name of Jesus, everything tying down your families, particularly. The Lord is asking me to release the family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Now I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy. Those outside, please follow me. Those online, follow me. Our time is gone, but let's just be patient. Two, three minutes, we're out of here. I decree and declare from tonight, move forward in the name of Jesus. Move forward in the name of Jesus. Move forward in the name of Jesus make progress 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 in the name of Jesus advance in the name of Jesus advance in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus multiply in the name of Jesus anyone here who has lost anything in your life i declare i'm seeing 28 in 28 days 28 days from now i command that it comes back to your hands i command that it comes back to your hand i command that it comes back to your hand anyone here who has been victimized by life by circumstances by men i decree and declare May the God I serve vindicate you right now. Everyone here in need of direction. You are praying, oh God, I need to know what step do I take. In the name of Jesus tonight, strange encounters that bring you direction. Strange encounters that bring you direction. The yoke of poverty and hardship and lack 
I command it to live your life now. I command it to live your life now. Live your family now. Live your destiny now. I pray for every family represented here. Whatever you are trusting God for as a family, I release my faith with you and I decree and declare that it is turned into your testimony now. The kind of favor you have not seen from January till now, I decree and declare from tonight, not tomorrow, from tonight, let it start working in your life. Strange favor in your life. Strange favor in your life. God has placed his honor upon this ministry. I pray for you from today, anywhere you go, whether they know you or not, I command them to honor you. Believe it, I command honor upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Two more prayer points and we are done. Whatever has made your pace of your life slow, some of you are moving forward, but you are too slow for your destiny. At the rate you are going, you will not do much in your lifetime. I prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for speed. Do in one month what you have not done in five years. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Whatever has taken advantage of your spiritual life, your prayer life, your fasting life, word life, passion for God, passion for the house of God, right now I stretch my hands and I declare fresh fire on your altar. Prayer fire on your altar. Word fire on your altar. Fasting fire on your altar. I decree and declare upon everyone receive a manifestation of the spirit of revelation in the name of Jesus let me add one last prayer point judgment upon the wicked let it begin tonight some of you don't like the prayer I say it again judgment upon the wicked in the name of Jesus Christ that every man woman boy and girl that partners with darkness to frustrate your destiny may the God of vengeance arise in the name of Jesus Christ wave your hands to Jesus father we give you all the praise we give you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade baskana kata branda kate kato. Kate branda kata pako tosko pobre kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.